Hey, what's up everybody? It's March 17th, 2023. And today, what I'm gonna do for you guys, since we haven't done this yet, since the snow has been, uh, uh, or since, since we're allowed to drive down the mountain, we're gonna take Highway 38 down, all the way down, and then just come back up Highway 330. Hope you guys enjoy. Just wanted you guys to see what the road conditions are like. Say hi dogs, doggies, doggies, Theo, Luna, say hi, say hi. I just got them oh, to geez. chill out, I'm sorry. Guys, we might not make it guys, <laughs> my wife's one of them type of drivers. <laughs> I drive a little differently guys. So hey, if you guys enjoy what I do, please hit the thumbs up and uh, like, no oh, way, I guess that would be the same thing, like, subscribe, share. Um, yeah, if you like your friends, share with and them. And then just watch it over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Create new accounts. Like. <laughs> just kidding. All right. All righty. Watch the channel for a while. We're picking up my other vehicle as well. And I figured this would be the perfect day to go do this drive. A couple days after they've really cleared out both or Highway 18, it'll be a great opportunity for us to really see what's going on. Um, but we're going to go down this route just to just to show you guys the two different main routes into town. There's a third through the desert side, but this is one of the ones, uh, I refer to this one as coming up the back on the front side, if that makes any sense. I know it really doesn't, but yeah, and say hi to Luna, she's the, she's the black dog, and say hi to Theo. Look at how cute, look at how cute he is. Hi bud, he's so cute, he wants to come say hi. Maybe you're attracting him again though, and he's gonna jump on my lap. driving and it was like God forbid. the snowy time, <laughs> not the other day, but like last night or something when I was around. <laughs> she was driving you guys, <laughs> holy smokes. Get off the road! <laughs> <laughs> you have any shoes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you should, yeah. You need to wear your shoes down there, not your snow boots. I told you. They're so cute. All right, are you gonna grab your shoes? Hang on guys, she's gonna grab her shoes. Okay. All right. Wife wants to make sure her, her feet are fashionable. No, I had boots on and I my knees are really bad. They've been, I have like water in my knees. So if I don't wear the right shoes, they I have a really bad flare and it looks like a popped water balloon in the back of my knee, so. I had to change them because I drove in my boots the other day and I really messed my knees up bad. We're going to be without her, you guys, for a few days. She's going to go see our kids and our grandkids. Once again, those of you who are new here, yes, our grandkids. I'm 72 years old, you guys but I grew up in Newport Beach and I've got a very amazing plastic surgeon. <laughs> Just 
just turned 72. And if you believe that, I don't know what to tell you. I'm actually turning 67. I hope to live to be 67. So anyway, maybe do you mind if I hit this? Chip this. Chip this. This looks like a coffee pot thing. To, I know, it's weird. Doesn't it? I, I it's like it's space age. Phone or something. I don't know. You know what? I, I think you're it's right. A speaker? I don't know. What is it? Guys, what is this? <laughs> Can we cook something on there? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and also I wanted to let you guys know it's a surprise but we're, we're going to be staying at a hotel in Big Bear one that we haven't stayed at yet for a few nights and uh, yeah thought I'd surprise you guys with that video because I enjoy doing lodging videos for you guys so you guys can see where you're going ahead of time and uh, yeah we're gonna get a tour from management and everything it's not gonna be a long video because none of these spots are, are that big up here but it's gonna be the first one where the management actually is excited to like give me a tour they offered because they've seen this channel before so that made me feel really good I can't believe how many people have actually seen this channel now. It's just, un it's unbelievable to me, you guys. And once again, for lots of you who are trying to start YouTube channels and, and stuff like that, the best advice I can possibly give you, the very, very best advice, is make sure what, what you're doing is because you love doing it. Like, you get up in the morning and you're just like, heck yes, I get to do this today. If you're trying to make make money, if you DM me, I will privately show you that even with almost 20,000 subscribers, you don't make money. Um, it's the sponsorships in the future and stuff like that. Um, I was looking at some stuff and even at like 100,000 subscribers, if you read a bunch of stuff on on Google, like, how much money does a YouTube channel make with 100,000 subscribers? It's between like, like 1,500 and five grand a month. That's with 100,000 subscribers, you guys. It's taken me eight years to get to 20, although I never asked you guys to like and subscribe until a few months ago. I went seven and a half years without ever asking because that was never my goal. But now that I'm married and I do want to do more hotel stays and vacations um, and make this my permanent gig because I am, as I said, I'm I'm newly married and my wife, she has been through an awful lot in life, so have I. Um, I thought I had been through a lot, but this woman right here is as tough as, tough as they come and she deserves everything. And I know I sound like the most amazing person for wanting to do that for, for, for my wife, but I'll tell you one thing, you guys, she, she puts up with me. I mean, she really puts up with me, so. God bless her for that. And now, by the way, just real quick, we're coming up here to Onyx Summit. This is the highest point on this road. It's 8,443 feet. Um, I believe it's the highest road in the, the San Bernardino National Forest. The highest point. Right here. There's a place to go sledding and stuff like that at the very top. Up here, it's a hit and miss situation when it comes to the snowstorms. Sometimes we'll have a lot more way down lower in elevation and sometimes this this area will get absolutely crushed Look at that view, you guys. Wow Babe, that is so beautiful. Oh my god. Look at San Gorgoni. Well, don't look because you're driving around curves No, I'm no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I know the window is dirty you guys. I forgot to to wipe it off But doggy nose Doggy nose streaks, yep. Look at San Gorgonio, yes. my gosh, it is so pretty. It feels like you're in a different mountain range over here. It makes this mountain range feel like a real, 
it does. a real mountain range, not just the little blip on the map that it truly is. When I used to live in Colorado, as a lot of you know, I, I was sent to a boarding school for, for two years. Of course, I got to come home for holidays and stuff like that. And so it, it, it was like two years locked away and I lived with a host family. But every Wednesday, the school, if we earned it, if we did well, we'd get to go skiing. And we got to go to basically every resort. Aspen was the only one that we didn't go to, but it was because it was too far. have met Bob on, on this channel he's, I don't want to say an, an older man, but he's an older man, and uh, I mean, not the is best he, I, health obviously issues obviously he's okay, but like is he is his car badly damaged? a little bit, yeah and funny enough, on this road my Saturn that we have in, in the driveway, years ago I was coming up, almost at this point here, a little further down came around a corner a big, big rock was in, in the middle of the road and I didn't have time to avoid it. So I was just praying that my car would go over it without okay. without hitting. And it hit my um, uh, my transmission fluid pan. And within one minute, my gas pedal wasn't working because it had leaked all out and I was stuck on the side of the road here. I didn't have AAA back then. I had to call a friend who I hadn't spoken to in years and he hooked me up. Um, now I have two AAA Premier memberships, you guys. He's fancy, people. <laughs> Very fancy. <laughs> I got the Gucci memberships. Um, the other day when I was driving down, I, I actually texted you. Oh my gosh. And um, I texted you. <laughs> oh, babe. <laughs> Come on, I'm driving. That's hard to concentrate. And now I forgot what I was going to say. You texted me driving down, or you, you were you were going to because of rock slides or something. Oh yeah. So there were so many huge, like huge boulders on this road that I took it so slow. There were people tailgating me, honking at me, and I was like, I don't care. There's huge boulders, and I think those people are just people that don't realize that you have to drive a little bit more careful. Well, I mean, you weren't being super super selfish. Like you pulled over it every one of these turnouts that you could to let them off, right? No, I was being selfish. Okay. Yeah, I'd be honking at you too, babe. <laughs> <laughs> guys, no, I know she absolutely pulled over. That's no, that's a huge, huge, over. huge thing, you guys. Um, you know, here's the thing, though, about the pulling over, uh -oh. is that with people who are locals that know these roads, they tend to tailgate people that don't know the roads. And that, in my opinion, it's only my opinion, Everyone has their own. Then I'll give you guys the truth. Um, that can cause an accident because these people don't know the roads, and you're like beep, and you're on. And I experienced that coming up the 18 uh, the other day when I was coming home. I was coming up the 18. It was super foggy. Roads were slippery, and this truck obviously he's got you know the power, and he puts on his brights gets on my butt and where am I supposed to go if you guys know the 18 there's nowhere to pull over so what did he want me to do and so I tried to speed up a little bit but I'm thinking to myself I'm not going to get in an accident because you know Mr. 4x4 with his bright lights wants I mean and eventually he went around me but I wasn't trying to be rude I just had nowhere to pull over and especially like with these roads where you do have somewhere to pull over sometimes you're going fast People misjudge what the turnout looks like. It causes you to like slip and slide and crash. Again, that's something I experienced when I was 18. I was being tailgated going up the 3:30, and I tried to pull over, and I just wasn't experienced with the mountain. I didn't know the estimated amount of time. 
time that it takes to stop on a pull out or a turnout. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I just feel like everybody should consider that when you're frustrated on the road and you're tailgating someone and you're upset that they're not pulling over or whatever, it could be that they're just super inexperienced with the road, which is like 80% and when you are tailgating somebody, or when you're being tailgated, it's harder f to focus on finding a turnout. But guys, there's plenty of turnouts on Highway 18 also. Mm -hmm. Plenty. Um, I mean, there's some. There's enough. But, you know, it was dark. Like, again. I, I, I gotta give them the right information. You know? There's like, some. So when it's dark, that's a huge, huge, huge difference, you guys. Yeah, I mean, yes. it was super dark. Like, the road's black. I'm in a Kia, guys. You know, if anybody drives a Kia, you know what the lighting is ahead of me. I, even my brights don't make that much of a difference. So I just say everybody, including me and my Kia, need to be considerate of what the situation on the road is, right? And how fast are you going now? I'm going 60. Okay. How fast am I supposed to be going? 55. Oh. But that's okay. 60 is fine. Well, like right now I have a guy behind me and he's not tailgating me, but, but I'm going a little faster because obviously he's a faster truck. Which means that we will pull over when we can for him. When we can. Yeah. But usually in a situation like this with some people, and I've experienced this a lot coming up and down this mountain, they will get on your butt. And it's like, we know this road right now. We know there's nowhere to pull over for a little while. So why are you on my butt? Get off of it. Alright guys, so once again, there's plenty of places to pull over. There are some long stretches, like my wife's saying, like right here, that there aren't. Right. But it's at least every mile to two miles, you'll have some some space where you, like right here, but we don't want to hit But like we're going so fast brakes. right now, like I'm going 60, so am I supposed to pull over in that little tiny spot? Just asking. Well, I guess I do things differently, but no, you're not supposed to slam on your brakes like that. No, because that's dangerous. And I didn't know that spot was coming up, so how, as an inexperienced person on this mountain, am I supposed to know that it's time to slow down because well, there's a Well, you're supposed to up? slow down with, uh, knowing that you're going to try to find a turnout. So I should slow down right now. Yeah, I forgot this guy, babe. He's on your butt. He is on my butt now because I didn't pull over on that last turnout. And again, like, oh this is where I get nervous. I do. This makes me nervous. You guys, so look, look. I'm, what, one thing I tell you guys all the time is when there's someone on your butt, don't speed up. Don't do that because that's going to get you in, in more trouble when you're already uncomfortable driving these, my sweaty. these mountain roads. So ne never, ever speed up just, just to appease them. That's the last thing you want to do. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Okay, so again, like, at what point do I know? When to Rachel, start it's really down? not that that. It really that is though. Man. It really is it, though. You're making it difficult. But this must be what most of the people go through driving I'm up here. I'm just letting you guys know that yeah. it is. Oh, Jesus. And 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 honestly, most of the people coming up here are already super nervous to drive these roads. My aunt will not drive up these roads. I'll never forget my aunt just freaking out, like freaking out, you guys. And the, I mean, I can understand. These are, these are tough roads. Wow. He didn't he even say the, thanks. Oh my God. He didn't say thank you and he almost hit the railing. So? So it just shows you, again, my point about how some people are super aggressively driving when... You know what? Let them just... fly off the cliff. Not us, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, you guys, over here, we're, we're, we're kind of on the other side of Snow Summit over here, you guys, which is pretty cool. We had a big fire. Was that this this last summer, babe? Mm -hmm. The Snow Summit fire? Last year, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this last, that's right. That was scary. That was scary. The smoke was literally coming in through our window. It was so bad, you guys. It was so bad. So, guys, you just got a first-hand experience of, of what it feels like to be tailgated when you're just trying to just drive. Um, even 
let's say you're going 70 on this road that's 55. If someone's on your butt, pull over and let them pass. But like, don't, how do you pull over at 70? That's my point. Rachel, come on now. Yeah. You sound crazy. No, like, no, I'm scared. Because you can, you can see up ahead, baby. I'm nervous. Like, once you get to a stretch where you can actually see, obviously, if there's a spot right, like, uh, if this spot right to the right was like tiny and you're going 75, of course don't because you're going to start spinning out and stuff. So like, I understand what you're saying and I'm not stupid. It's just no one said you're stupid. that what you, I feel like, aren't understanding is when people drive like that, I get really, really nervous. I'm on a mountainside well, and I'm from the city. We're in the I don't drive these, I don't, yeah. you know, and some there's a person behind you with a big giant truck going 70. And you're saying it's not that hard to figure out. It's like they're making me nervous. It's fucking up my. Whoa! Watch your mouth. Sorry. Sorry, guys. You guys heard me during that live feed when the rat ran out on the live feed. You guys, uh, yeah, that was like, <laughs> I said that about 10 times in a row. But she apologizes. She's just nervous. start slowing way down knowing that the next turnout you'll be turning instead of just racing the whole time so if, if they have to wait one more minute it's not a big deal so put your your guys's life first because it it can be life and death up here in a in a big way um and as i said don't ever speed up if someone's on on your butt because you'll you'll be putting yourself in a worse situation i know all of us are i'll speak speak i'll, I'll speak for myself I like to appease other people. I don't like being that guy who's in the way. Um, and so I'll speed up. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. That's mailboxes. I know, weird. What? All right, guys, hang on a moment. Hope you guys aren't mad about that. I apologize about that. She never cusses, like ever. So she must have been really nervous. Hi, baby. Hi. Everything good? Did you find it? Yeah, give me one sec. There's, there's no excuse, you guys, to like not pull. All right, babe. Okay. All right, hang on a second, guys. No, because okay, get back. Because YouTube hears, hears what, what you say. Just like if you're, if you're playing music, they'll demonetize your stuff. If you're playing someone else's song. Yeah, I know. And it's like it knows right away. Probably got 
so much Christopher, traction. Christopher Dorner, guys, turned right here, and he was in one of these cabins right, right down there with his final standoff, right, baby? Mm -hmm. That's just crazy to think that a manhunt, when every news station in the whole country was focused on it, the dude was here. That was two years before I actually moved up here. Boys and girls club type spot and you know what like I think that's that may have been where we stayed for my sixth grade most schools I guess in sixth grade come up here to do a, a, a week like astronomy yes, type like thing scout camp right here or something we just yeah we, yeah we just passed it that's what that was yeah oh okay. boys and boys and, and girls club I think or just boys club I think right there and uh once again, it was like that was one of the most awesome times I, I had ever had, and it, it was one of the first times that I was ever away from my mom for like more than one night, and not with like a friend or something like that. So it it was kind of tough for me because I think I was like 11 and a half or 12. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was 13. I turned 13 in in sixth grade because. I didn't get held back, it's just where my birthday falls. I started the following year of school. And so most of the kids I was going to school with are like, were I think 11 and a half, 12. And I, I turned 13 in sixth grade, which is crazy, huh? I, I turned 16 in ninth grade. I skipped the fifth grade and went to straight to seventh grade. Because she couldn't find the door to the fifth grade. That's so right. she was like, where the hell am I? So she went right into the... And they were so, like, ah, oh, you're tall enough. Just go to seven. Yeah. So my wife was a freaking giant back then, I guess. Like, tallest kid in the class. I was always the shortest kid in the class. But yes, I was tall. I was known as the green giant, and I got made fun of. Now who's laughing, gorgeous? <laughs> I, I remember as a youngster, the girls were really tall. Like, really tall in school. I mean, literally, the boys came up to my waist. Yeah, that's, that's how I, well, I was naturally short, but. I'm going faster than someone, wow. I know, crazy. That's insane. I, I do like to take this road. You know, it's just scenic. It it's yeah. so beautiful. Why would you want to race it? Obviously, the other road's scenic also with the views from 6,000 feet up at many points, but this is just, this feels like, once again, more of a mountain range. Um, and it it's very deceptive. It, it, it makes you feel like you're in a much larger mountain range than you're really in because you're driving parallel to the mountains. You guys, if they had a road that went up that darn mountain right there, it would only take you about 15 minutes from the bottom to get to Big Bear. I got it, babe. You focus on, on, on driving like a champ. I forgot to bring their crate, which I usually travel with them in a crate because um, I made the mistake of driving with them on my lap before and at my feet and oh my gosh it's not a good idea if you slam on the brakes your dogs hit the freaking windshield and if they're at your feet they're blocking the pedal so it's just not a good idea to have an animal on your lap while you drive especially you luna she jumps all over the place doesn't sit still see the San, San Gabriel's out there too. Just covered with snow. There's a, couldn't get that because too much reflection in the car. Yeah guys. Really, really want to be careful.
careful of the rock slides over here. Um, as I said, I, 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 I screwed up a car big time because of that on, on Highway 38. Most of the people who I know who have had issues on the roads up here have been this road only for that reason, for, for the rocks. But this is the road that I send my 80 year old mom up because for me, it's much safer in, in the big scheme of things because it's a lot, not as many twists and turns. I, and I mean, we're, we're going through twists and turns right now. Look at that tree, <laughs> lightning strike. Crazy, exploded that thing. Yeah, this is, uh, well, it's, it's probably seven, eight miles longer, maybe even a little bit more than taking the other roads into town. But there aren't as many cliffs to fall off if you crash. And once again, I'm saying that as we're next to a cliff, but it's, it's not nearly as bad. The other roads we take are right on the other side of that mountain right there. There's the rock cleanup crew there. Yep. Oh yeah, those are some on big, big, big machines. Big machines. So did you guys hear, speaking of those big machines, someone in, in Crestline, when the city wasn't doing squat, the state wasn't doing squat to help, actually went out and took took one of the, the, the big tractors and started snow plowing and got in big trouble for it. But apparently because um, my good, well, he was my best friend for 35 years of my entire life, David Mendelson. He grew up right next door to me on Linda Isle in Newport Beach. His father owns United Rentals. So like every job site that you see that has any any construction going, you see a, a United Rentals truck. I mean, man, these guys are so, so loaded. This is pulling over for me. Guys, this is a rare uh, occasion that somebody pulls over for me. Right here. What is this? Oh. Just to say thank you. Oh yeah. I wasn't being rude. I just don't ever get pulled over for, so I forgot to say thank you. <laughs> Yeah, guys, that's that's one thing that I always do up here is when someone lets you pass, I always turn on my hazards as soon as I pass them and even like wave to them just to say thank you. Because uh, a lot of people are just so in their own little world and don't care about other people and don't realize that that is the rule of the road up here is you let people pass. As I said, no matter how fast you're going, if you're going 90, and they're on your butt, find a place to pull over and let them pass. Um, and then say thank you, you know? If you drive with that type of attitude up here, it's much, much, much easier. And I know we're talking about this a lot, but it's a serious problem up here. And as I said, we, we get a lot of people who just don't, don't care about anybody else. And uh, they're just in their own narcissistic entitled world and uh, won't pull over they might even slow down more just to like be more irritating I've seen that and, and it's, it's just I mean please don't be one of them I've seen some pretty crazy stuff coming up and down the mountain like fighting swerving around each other just super dangerous like... I've, I've been a part of it <laughs> I, I've sadly the first few years that I lived up here especially those of you who've watched this channel for many many years for my first two years every video every word was the f or every other word was the f word i was i was cussing at all all the drivers flipping them off um, and that's just that's just no way to present yourself in any situation i wasn't cool for that i was a total tool disrespectful just a total loser um, I, I still regret many years, many years later about how I, how I used to behave up here. Um, but you guys, and I'm serious, you guys are the ones who, who helped me grow up. And you guys gave me constructive criticism. You guys weren't just like calling me out 
saying you're such an a-hole or like something you guys were being super 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 awesome um like uh as i said giving me constructive criticism see i that's one thing i can honestly say that i do appreciate about big bear and how being up here changed me because when i first came out here like nick's talking about and it's funny that you're even talking about this because i just told this to my niece um when i first moved up here i was so aggressive like angry about what i don't know but i well, well you're from la That's, yeah exactly I, and, I understand. and visiting la i see like they're really it's a lot of really angry people like you can't even look or say hi and, and up here it's a thing to say hi to each other even though you don't know each other so it's calmed me down a lot i love my new calm personality like being able to say hi to strangers and just being a lot more calm that's definitely changed for me we're driving through angeles oaks you guys real quick never speed through this town even going 42 S Am I too fast for you? No, 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 no. Even even going a, a little faster than the speed limit in this town, they they will pull you over and be happy to give you a ticket. Remember, you guys, this is a big way that this area makes makes money is by ticketing people, um, especially in the summertime when there's less traffic coming up and down. You guys, so keep keep that in mind always any little city that you end up driving through just always be extra extra cautious follow that speed limit not to say that when you're out of those those little cities to start speeding up just always try always try i know it's really common sense you guys and i i shouldn't actually have to be talking about this but it's it's not worth it tickets are expensive I know I sure can't afford a ticket um, and it, it does look like from what some of you say that I'm going way too fast in in my regular videos but I'm really not you know it's just for for the conditions I might be going a little faster than I should and even if the speed limit is 45 and you're going 45 when there's ice and snow if if the officer thinks you're, you're driving too fast for the conditions you can still get a ticket oh, wait, him go. Whoa. that's me that was scary his knee almost touched the pavement stop driving my new car for a while because I put way too many miles on it it's not a lease so it doesn't really matter but I just maybe just we got dogs trying to sneak up to the front wow that's wow that is so pretty down there Are your ears starting to pop up, or is it just me? Okay, just me. It's so pretty, and there's a little dirt of walking, a dirt road right there that goes up to that little hill. We gotta, I gotta remember that, that little area. Because we could park right there and just walk up that little mountain, babe. Yeah, I would love to um, stop at that picnic area and walk down with them one day. That It's such a beautiful little like secret secluded spot. We're at 5,000 feet elevation now. We're about to make our big descent fairly soon. 
couple more left, rights, left, rights, and then we're we're gonna be heading down. Oh, it really is such a such a beautiful place. It's really weird being a passenger, you guys. Like I'm never a passenger driving, driving these these roads. Ever. I don't think I've ever been, to tell you the truth, driving up and down the mountain. Because I'm always so worried about other people's driving. But my wife's a pretty darn good driver, so thank goodness. I could probably fall asleep with her driving. I'm okay. I like to drive slow. And that's why the problem, that's when the problem, what, am I not driving slow? <laughs> You've been driving faster than the speed limit the whole time, babe. I mean, not, not like, e not like illegal. You're, you're just a good driver. You're, you're a good driver. Oh, he's shaking his head no behind the camera, guys. <laughs> <laughs> not funny. All right, so we're making our first big, big descent. And keep in mind, at the base of this mountain, I think parts of Mentone right there are close to 2,000 feet as you're, you're entering the San Bernardino National Forest. You know what? I need to... I'm going to tell my GPS to take me to Yukaipa, even though we don't, we're not going to have service. Oh, but maybe. Take me to Yukaipa Auto Collision. I don't have time. I've got cuss. Like, I don't have time, okay? I really wish that I could, baby. Okay, this town here to the left, Forest Falls. We're not going to be able to get a great view, but if you guys drive up in there, turn left here go back in there it it feels like you're you're in like the Swiss Alps back there it's really re really remarkable incredibly beautiful and I thought we'd be seeing a much like a big river right here from all the snow runoff but we're not to the left there's a big wash a huge wash and I know it's it's hard to see but I, I can't see I mean if if you must, I can go through a, a drive through that we can part ways. I got a bunch of people waiting for me right now. There's a little bit of a stream right there, see it again? Yeah, so that stream leads into, or it's coming from that picnic flats that I was huh? mentioning earlier. That area where it's called like picnic flats or something. It's not, it's not picnic. Uh, yeah, it says picnic on it. <laughs> no. Does it? Does it? Uh, thought it did. Did we pass it already? No, we did not. Okay, we'll know right now. I never knew about this place this, until I, I met my wife. This is one of my favorite little spots to stop at before you come up to Big Bear. Or when you're leaving too, it doesn't matter. But before you come up is, is a good time to stop. Um, it's got like this natural water what do you call it? Uh, river? Like a reservoir? Maybe? Well yeah, I was well no, I was telling them that it's a wash, it's from snow runoff and But when, then that area too is yeah. as well because there's water throughout yeah, there's, all year Yeah, yeah it's uh it, there is a spring down there A spring and I think we're actually getting really, really close. We're actually entering a town called um, Mountain Home Village. This little tiny town right here. I'm assuming most of them, if they have jobs, probably work down down here, you think? Since it's, we're a lot closer to the bottom of the mountain than we are at the top. But I'm gonna, Like in this area? 
I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for this. Uh... Yeah, it's literally like right at the bottom. obviously going to be on the left hand side you guys it's got a, a parking lot and then you walk maybe 100 yards and then you'll end up in a little area behind a bunch of trees and that's, that's like a swimming hole Ther Thurman Flats I think that is the area and then this is the that's this it the, yeah so this is the parking lot for oh, it. Yeah, see Thurman Flat Picnic Area. Thurman Flats Picnic Area. And, and it's, it's closed. closed. That's interesting. Maybe because of all the the uh, rushing water right now. They have uh, wild raspberries that grow during the springtime right That's there. That's right. That's right. It's just a really beautiful spot. And as you're like walking through the trailway to get to the water, you can hear the water and then there's raspberry. It's just so beautiful. It's my favorite spot. You see birds, you see little like, you know, all the little forest animals are around there because of the water. Thurman Merman. You guys remember Bad Santa? Hilarious movie. So yeah, there's, uh, yeah. We, we, we just missed it. There is a river going through there. There it's it is. Water, yeah. That's snow melt, you guys. And when we get major thunderstorms up here, that whole entire area will be a huge river. My first year up here, um, some guy was taking some lady on their first date, and he got swept away and lost his life. What? Yeah. Yep. He was just trying to be in a beautiful spot. So when we get up here to Bryant, turn left, okay, babe? Once we're at just past the bottom of the mountain, it's your first street that you can turn left. We need San Bernardino, we need San Bernardino National Forest. So we're not going to go all the way once we get to Bryant, you guys. That's when I'm going to shut this off, and then we will do a, a second video, which will be heading up the mountain. Highway Tree Toady to 18. A lot of mercy. I hit a butterfly. Did you see that? No, I heard it. Oh, hills are right now it's so pretty I mean yeah guys all this rain and snow that we've had this season it's gonna make for a beautiful spring but it's gonna make for a horrifying fire season because of all the new fresh veg out here there's always pros and cons with everything right but anyway say bye babe <laughs> thank bye, you babe thanks for the ride you're welcome it was stressful, I'm not gonna lie. The guys, see, and we live up there. It's it's not easy. It's not left here. Here? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Alright, you guys. <laughs> Just one more so, uh, break check before you guys if you, go. If you, if you guys enjoy what I do and enjoy what my wife does, please do me a huge favor and hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, we'll be getting another video for you. Oh, and share. We'll be doing another video driving up the 330. Love you guys. Thank you for all the support in the world. Thanks for cruising with us on a stressful ride. <laughs> Appreciate it. And uh, we will talk to you soon. We are headed into you, headed into you, Kaipa. <laughs> oh, she, she's so hot. I'm so lucky. Thank all right. you. You're welcome, baby. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.